Guys, James got back from a land far, far away with a trailer full of motorcycles in. There's a very, very special motorcycle in here. One I've been searching for and lusting for for many a moon. James, do the honors. Ready? Yes, sir. Here we go. Here it is. The Holy Grail. A one owner, 1969 Honda 750 Sandcast. Matching numbers, all original, except for the seat. And he has the original seat with it. And the air box isn't on it, but he has that too. So he has the components that were taken off of it and the original exhaust. 6,700 miles. 6,700 original miles, one owner. His dad owned it when it was brand new and uh, he in inherited it from him. And we're gonna restore it to its original glory. So stay tuned. Justin had to come out. He's a sand, our resident sandcast guru. He grew up with a neighbor who had four of these. Yeah, look at the muscular lines of this thing, man. And uh, he had a total of 40 CB750. So you've seen a few of these in your time, huh? Absolutely. Dead giveaway is on the clutch cover here. There's a blank bolt hole. We're on the later ones. Uh, this is a nine bolt cover and the later ones are a 10 bolt cover. So that's the dead giveaway on the engine besides the VIN. But you can see the rough casting. I mean, even on video, how rough that engine casting it is. is. It is. So what's different between a, a Sandcast 750 and a regular 750? Honestly, there's more different than similar, um, which is hard to believe, but uh, there's over a hundred different um, pieces on this bike that aren't on a K1 71 CB750. You can go right from the carburetors. These uh, these have individual throttle cables going to each carburetor, whereas the later ones had a, a rack that raises all the needles at the same time. Yep, I'm gonna put a mic on you so we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Um, this exhaust is sand cast only as well. This is a no numbers exhaust. Uh, this is an early bike. I'm trying to see if it's a Lotus Roots. Um, I'll have to dig into it more to be certain. But um, another thing is, is the red seat foam. We have the original seat for the bike with the red seat foam. That's a huge bonus. This is an early bike. Uh, the VIN on the engine is... Could you put it on the center stand for us so we can yeah, get a profile of it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the engine's super low VIN. It's 1,232. How many were made, do you know? Uh, 7,414. Okay. So this is very early. And you can see the, the headstock is 1185. So this is a numbers matching bike right away. Um, generally the engines and uh, frame vins are about a hundred off. So this is numbers matching. This is correct. It does need a full once over, but this is super good it bones. It hasn't been washed or detailed. No, years. no, this is fresh out of a barn. So I can't wait to dig into it. Yeah, the paint looks amazing on it. I love the color. Wait till the paint shop gets a, get the detail shop gets a hand of this thing and polish all the aluminum up and, and clean it up and get the gas stains off from the carburetors and everything. Yeah. Shine up the chrome. Um, we'll restore this thing to its former glory for sure. Yeah, this has all the pieces. It really does. So we can go right ahead and see this has the rolled rear rim and the front rim as well. This has a uh, more of a roll to it than a standard CB750. That's sand cast only. Um, pretty much everything on this bike is sand cast only, including these. These are very early turn signals. Uh, the early ones were red, and later on they switched to the uh, that orange color that we all know. Merkel has original lenses on it still. Yeah, yeah, in great condition too. Um, this this brake caliper right here is sand cast only as well. It's a little bit different, um, and you can see the rolled front rim. Uh, front rim. Yep. Uh, this has a dished master cylinder cap as well. This is sand cast only, has a deeper dish to it, whereas the later ones are flat. Um, the gauges are sand cast only. They have a plastic lens with the green lettering on them. And there's no cracks or anything in the gauges, which is remarkable. These are super easy to break. They're really fragile. Uh, another thing that's cool is uh, this top triple tree is actually sand cast only too. It's very hard to find these. They often, uh, as soon as the bike crashes, you're gonna ruin the gauges and the triple tree. So to find find one that has the gauges and the triple tree intact is, is hen's teeth. It's so hard to find. Um, this switch on the sand cast is black instead of the standard red that we're used to. Both the switches are actually different. You can see this housing is slightly, it's a little more shallow. It's a it's smaller. Color too than I'm used to seeing. Yeah, yeah. The headlight buckets are perfectly straight. Usually they're bent from, from being dropped, you know? Yeah, yeah, the ears. There's not even a kink in there or any, it's never been dropped. No, no, that's super remarkable. These and are the original mirrors. They have the Honda Motor Co Company stamp on it. At least this one does. This is Honda Motor Company. Yeah. This one might be uh, aftermarket. 
That could have been added on after. Yeah. Wow. Now the reason the sand casts are different is these were actually built in a different factory uh, as opposed to the later CB750s. Um, these were essentially hand built and that's why there's so many different parts because they would take parts from other bikes and kind of make pieces as they went along to develop these bikes. And um, that's the reason there is a hundred differences between this and you know a bike that was made a year later. Remarkable. Wow, yeah, even the foot pegs, these are all everything. No evidence of it being dropped uh, that I can see anywhere on this side. No, it looks no. It's perfectly straight, and this thing will clean up like a new penny. Absolutely. I can't wait to see what detail does with it, oh, honestly. It'll be remarkable. It'll be absolutely remarkable. <laughs> we'll make sure not to um, change any of the, the original finishes. We're just going to clean them, you know? Yeah. Clean and polish, clean and polish. Preserve wow, yeah. the original paint. How many original paint sandcasts do you think are left? That's a good question. Uh, there's a registry, there's a sandcast registry that has about 1,200 bikes registered. So um, that's the known, known ones that exist. And original paint ones, I mean, that, that's a good question. Probably just a couple hundred, if I had to guess. Uh, there is a company out of Japan, Yamiya, that sells reproduction tanks and covers and everything, pre-painted. And a lot of bikes ended up with uh, getting that treatment because these are worth it. So it's spectacular color, I really like it. I do too. Yeah, it's a little bit different than the blues that came on the later bikes. It's it's unique. It's I bet oh show them the original saddle. Yeah. Tank is beautiful on the inside. Yeah, we have pictures of that. This is the red seat foam. You can see it's faded wow. to like a pink color, but it looks the seat the seat base is remarkably nice. Yeah, even this this uh, pan is sand cast only. Wow. Yeah, we could shine this up. I'd put this back on. We're going to. Thank yeah. God he took it off. <laughs> yeah. Right. Let's show, show him the top. It has the, the, it has this fin on the back, which is yeah the um, ducktail, a ducktail fin, which uh, the only year they had it, right? Yeah, yeah. I think the early uh, K zeros had it. The early seventies had it, but yeah, too. Yep. Um, th these are distinct. They're, they're just a little bit different. The airbox is unique to the motorcycle too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's painted to match the rest of the bike, that which is really year, cool. Only year they did that, right? Yeah, yeah. I believe so. So it has a complete original back to air box, which we'll reinstall and wow. uh, restore to brand new. That's amazing. Original paint. Shine in it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Definitely was stored in a, in a, uh, a good environment for sure. Yes. Keep it looking this nice after all these years. Yeah, the gentleman. It hasn't been cleaned in, in uh, probably 20 years. Oh, yeah. Since he last rode it. That might have saved a lot of it too, it being um, not clean, you know, the oil and stuff does end up saving these bikes. Yeah, especially on the, the rear, the rear uh, you can see the, the rear wheel has all the chrome on it because there's chain lube on it. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> it, it kept it oiled. Best thing you could do for a bike where you're parking for 20 years is cover it with a, a full can of WD-40. Yeah. You know, and fill the, fill the fuel tank with, with the oil and the carbs and the cylinders and uh, come back and just clean it off. It'll still be like brand new. I think that's the original chain on the bike, honestly which is super there's remarkable. Seven, uh, yeah, there'd be a way to tell that for sure. Wouldn't there be a, um, uh, some defining feet? Well, 6,000 miles, I'm sure it's original chain. Yeah. Wow. I know he did change the tires, but um, we'll clean that chain in the parts washer and see if we can restore it and put it back on. Yeah. I want to keep this thing as close to original as, as humanly possible. Uh, uh, the grips, those are obviously been replaced. Uh, are the originals available? Uh, yes. We'll have to get the, we'll make a parts list uh, of any components we want. We'll try to source originals where possible. Of course, and we'll clearly go over what the the um, resurrection, uh, not really a restoration, it's more of a resurrection, getting it running. We're not going to restore this. We're not going to repaint it. We're just going to clean it and polish it and, and maybe do some touch-up like on the Honda. Uh, it's missing some of the black paint right there. That wouldn't be a, a, a crime to, to touch that in, up and polish up the aluminum, would it? I don't think so. And we do have ways to restore the paint uh, and special waxes and polishes and chemicals and sealants and put a coat, coat a new coat on it. It's a polymer uh, once a year wax that we use and use COAT. Uh, the guy who owns a Lars Anderson Museum turned me on to that stuff. He's got cars that have, were painted 50 years ago. It's still brand new. He puts it on once a year. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> He's on everything now. New coat. And they're not sponsoring me. I pay for it. What else is different about this in a regular? Yeah, so this actually has the fish. this has the original ignition ignition switch on it, which is super hard to find. People lose the keys all the time. This is the original key to it as well. Sandcast key. Um, this is original to the sandcast. It has the recess in there, and that's how you know. And this one has the original stopper on the key, the the guide for it, which is super super cool. 
Justin is uh, our resident Sandcast single overhead cam on a 70 Guru. Matter of fact, uh, I went when we when I met him uh, quite a few years ago at a rally we were doing. They were trying to outlaw motorcycle riding in Connecticut. Yeah, and we had like 3,000 people show up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and burn a cross on on town hall uh, up in uh, Enfield, I think it was. And uh, after that, I met him at Riceorama, and he had a turbocharged Bandit and. I went to a shop and he has a turbocharged single overhead cam 70, which I think you should bring it in. So I really, we really need to do a video on that one. That thing's remarkable. Absolutely. And I, I bought four single overhead cam 70s from him. And then I offered him a job. He was working in the computer industry. I said, how much do you make in a year? I said, what if, and he gave me a number. I said, would a $15,000 raise over that get you to jump ship? <laughs> I was gone. Two weeks later, I started here. <laughs> he put his two week notice in and, and the rest is history. But to have a young person, 25 years old, who loves motorcycles as much as you, um, you're worth, you're worth your weight in gold to the future of the company. You know, Junior and I talked about it last night. It's like, you know, Jeff Castine wants to do one more year. Um, Bill Kelly, he's one or two more years. If we're lucky, we'll get him to, we don't want him to leave, but they're, they're kind of at retirement age, you know, and, and right. uh, we'll hope they'll stay as long as they can, you know. Uh, so having someone like you come on who's an A-Tech who loves these vintage bikes is key for what we do. So you're going to be restoring this bike. You're going to be in charge of making all the decisions. You can consult your neighbor expert there if you want. Bring them here to show it to them. I don't care. But I, we want to restore this thing to pristine, uh, authentic restoration under your guidance being a, a Sandcast guru. I'd love to. What do you think about that? I don't have to ask you twice, do I? No, no, not at all. <laughs> you don't have to twist my arm. You're a volunteer, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what a joy to work on one of these. I, I'm going to personally be the one that washes it. I'm the one who's going to clean it. Um, and we'll talk about what we're going to do with the aluminum and stuff to make sure it's, we're going in the correct direction. But that's my specialty is I've, I've probably done more detailing on vintage Hondas than anybody on the planet. I'm pretty sure I, ha I have in the last 10 years. I don't think anybody's done more than I have. I think so. so. But uh, I'm going to ask you to, to help us make sure we get the right grips for it, the right fork boots, the right. Everything's got to be correct on this. I want to put the period correct tires on it. I want this thing. I don't care what it costs. I don't care how long it takes. I want it freaking perfect. <laughs> it will be too. It's your first one, and we're gonna do it right. Yeah, what we talked. I don't know if we talked about it on camera, but I've been after a sandcast for, well, shit, for for a long, long, long time, over a decade, and I have not even come across one locally for sale. I, I've only seen them in faraway places, in, in like in Mecham or something. But to have this one on the East Coast and to have James, uh, we certainly weren't outsourced to any any any. Uh, um, what is it? One eight. Who, who's the Sure as hell wasn't having you ship with some stranger in an open trailer get anywhere near this thing because James has delivered like 6,000 bikes for me and not damaged one of them. So I knew it was in good hands with James. And um, thank you, James, for getting it home safe. I appreciate it. You're a valued team member. Um, this is a really, really cool piece. It's just an honor to, to be in the presence of this bike and, and be getting started on restoring it. I'm really excited. What else is different? So we have the smoothed off oil filter right here. Um, this is the key sandcast defining thing right here. It has no fins on it. This is unique to the sandcast. Looking underneath, I can see that it has, well, obviously it is a sandcast engine case, but these have a unique oil pan as well, and this one's perfectly intact. Let me crawl under there. Look, you see. That's a unique oil pan too? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, and it's all intact. Never bottomed out. And this bike was treated well. There's no scaze on the bottom of the exhaust the or anything. The are beautiful. There's yeah. There's not a or a dent anywhere in them. No, no, no rust either. They're it's... gonna clean up like a new penny. Wow. I can't wait we to see We need to call it. Mo Tool and have him overnight us a case of chain clean. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> the distributor's out of stock. We love using Mo Tool chain clean on the on the chains on these and uh, degreasing these, these bikes. So, yeah. Hmm. Wow. Right. What else is different? Uh, this uh, this points cover right here is sand cast only. It's a little bit sharper, and it's also thicker. Once we pull it off, you can see that it's thicker. But tell, I can tell right away. It's a way sharper edge right here. And uh, all these chrome covers are actually different too. These are way thicker. They're really heavy too. When you pull them off, you'd be like, wow, this covers you know a couple pounds almost. <laughs> uh, wow. But yeah, this has everything. It has every little piece that I can see. It has the early uh, oil lines on it, which. Um, the early oil lines actually weren't black, they were this tan color, so that's remarkable to see as well. And all the bolts, you can tell just by looking at them that they're original sand cast. It's cool that it still has all the original warning stickers, all those are intact. We have to be very careful as we, as we do the cosmetic restoration. I'm not worried about the mechanical part, because 
you guys got that, but the, the cosmetic part, we're going to be really, really picky about what we do with this thing. Exactly. In the, in the detail department. Yeah, even all the cables. Uh, this has the original clutch cable on it. Um, the later ones had a black cover right here. This is a tan cover on the clutch cable. Uh, it's, I mean, it's remarkable that this is really a time capsule right here, and it's such a low VIN, which just adds it adds to it. It really does. Being 1200, I mean, that's a super low sandcast number. Wow, very cool. Yeah, um, I don't think anybody here has anybody on our staff, even the the, the senior techs. I don't, even th I don't even think Jeff Castine knows half of what you just mentioned. If he does, uh, uh, I'd be surprised. Um, so I guess growing up with a neighbor had four of these, it was a, a leg up on the competition. Uh, not, that, not that it's a competition, but it's pretty cool that at your age you have that much knowledge of this iconic classic. I always dream to work on one of these, so it's, it's going to be a pleasure. You know, I'm going to be excited. I mean, I'm excited to come in every day, but I'm going to be, like, jumping out of my bed to come here and work on this thing. I can't wait. It's freaking awesome. <laughs> I'm going to clean it for you first. So I'll probably have you help me clean it just so I don't, uh, I just, I'm a little nervous about this one. <laughs> yeah. Not, not that, I mean, I have, we just wrote a 50 or $60,000 37 Indian today, but I feel like those are more accessible than this. I feel like this is like unobtainium, you know? Right. They only made 7,000 and you know, who knows how many are left. And this is all original parts too, which, you know, really adds to it. What are your thoughts, James? I've been all over the country, you know, all kinds of collectors and all kinds of collections, and I've never seen another one of these in any shape. Yeah, you just they just very rarely, even at Daytona, at the big bike meets, you, they just, most of them are squirreled away. And how many went back to Japan? You know, how many got bought back up and went to other countries? Um, was it 6,000 total worldwide? Yeah, it was 7414 worldwide. 74. And so how many came to the US? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know off the top of my hand, but I do know all the first bikes got sent to dealers and road racers. So they were all running to the ground. They were all sent to famous people. And a lot of those guys, they just didn't care. It was a CB750. They just rode these things. To the, it. Yeah, until the wheels fell off. They really did. So to find one that's been in the same family since brand new with 6,700 miles, that's all original. What, what are the odds of that? It, 7,000 to 1? Yeah. <laughs> 7,414 to 1 to be precise, right? Yeah. <laughs> Freaking unbelievable. I feel like we hit lotto. <laughs> I, feel, I really feel that way, too. <laughs> wow. What a, the last couple of days, we've had so much fun working here. Yesterday, we rode those 20 bikes. Uh, we, we rode the John Player Norton 850, the, the 1965 BMW R50, the 37 Indian Chief. Those three bikes are worth a hundred thousand dollars. Just three of them. Yeah. And then this thing rolls off the trailer today. Can it get any better than this? I don't think so. These it, are this the is heaven. Old, these are the good old days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is heaven, like you said. Yeah. We're making them right now. <laughs> yeah. These are the good old days. Freaking awesome. Just glad to be alive playing with these bikes, man. Uh, it's nothing. Nothing I'd rather do with my life at all. Not even remotely close. And I don't care about the money. If I can make more money being a real estate broker or a stock guy, who gives a shit? I don't care. At my age. You know, uh, I want to have fun. <laughs> I'm the same way. Especially have fun, huh, James? Yeah, a lot, a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Working his ass off, picking up bikes all over the country. He's doing a nine-load pick at how many locations? Three. Three, and, and, and a Harley full dresser, uh, gold a Goldwing, and two, tur two turbo Hondas, 650s and 500, and a CBX, all big bikes. So good thing your back's still in good shape, James. So far, so good. On a quick summary, the, the taillight, the turn signals, the wheels, the seat, airbox, the airbox, carburetors, the carburetors, the um, exhaust, yeah, the engine covers, the engine cases, yeah, the front wheel, the front turn signals, the, the um, triple clamp, the um, master cylinder. Like you had said, much of this motorcycle is significantly different than the um, production versions. This was a sandcast. Why did they do the sandcast first? Oh, um, well, they did the sand cast first because uh, this was, it was almost like a trial run. They didn't have the die casting um, down yet for these. They didn't have the molds made, so they made these with sand cast. Every, every single one was hand made, essentially, hand sand cast. Um, they didn't, yeah, they just didn't have the die cast set up for, the, for these bikes yet, so. Would it be safe to call this the holy grail of Japanese superbikes? It really is. Yes, absolutely. And it's not just the engine cover. It's not just the cases. Everything is sand cast on these. The head is, the barrels, um, the, even the valve cover. Once we pull, or, yeah, once we pull the valve cover off, 
we'll be able to see right away. That, I, um, I didn't know that was the case, yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah, if you pull this valve cover off, there's, there's gonna be a uh, unique crosshatch pattern that goes across the whole top of the cover, too. Um, Very cool. So guys, stay tuned. We will keep you up to date on each level of the progress with this bike. We're going to put it back to original, original air box, original seat right there. Thank the good Lord. We have all the components and we'll get the, the proper original grips and then we'll do a very careful cosmetic restoration. Then it'll go to Justin once it's all cleaned up and uh, he'll do the carbs and, and uh, anything else it needs. Uh, original tires, it'll go through the brakes, the, the, the full, full resurrection, we'll call it. Sandcast Resurrection, part one. What was his competition in 69? There really wasn't any. Um, you know, the Kawasaki Z1 didn't come out till 73. So this was, this was the, uh, the highest performance bike you could buy in 1969. Well, the diamonds coming off the truck here at KTM 520 MMC. Cool. Look at this 500 cow. Uh, 7,414. Wow. So, yeah, give or take. Wow, look at this one. That is beautiful. That's a Husqvarna 450. Completely pimped out. Sponsored by Motul. Motul logo on. Good to go. <laughs> so I'm obviously very excited about this opportunity to uh, be a good steward for this iconic masterpiece, Super Rare Sandcast. So stay tuned, we'll keep you posted on every phase of the resurrection here. Thanks for watching. Guys, hit the like and subscribe button, please do. It helps the algorithm, it helps us grow the channel. So more killer bikes like this show up. Thanks for watching. God bless America. God bless Japan and Mr. Honda himself for creating this masterpiece. Have a great day.